good morning. We are joined by Chancellor Robert Duncan. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank good you very morning. much for being here. Oh, we might qualify that. Chancellor of Texas Tech University. Yes. System. And Doug Hensley is also System. in with us. Yeah. And he's the Managing Information Director yeah. for uh, the Chancellor's Office. Welcome to the show. Hey, you're approaching uh, one-year anniversary. I guess July 7 is actually the day. That's right. Uh, well, congratulations well, on that. Time flies when you're having a good time. What's the, uh, I mean, kind of state of the university, just in general terms? I mean, you know, where were we before you came in? Where are we now? Where are we going? Well, I think I inherited a very good ship. Uh, you know, this the system basically has grown from 1996 when it was actually created officially, when you had Monfort as the first chancellor, then you had... Uh, David Smith, Kent Hance, uh, and it has raised the level of the uh, Texas Tech uh, footprint as well as presence in the nation. And so now Texas Tech University here is a nationally uh, competitive research university. You have two comprehensive health-related institutions, pharmacy, uh, nursing. We are the only border medical school uh, in the country and uh, a great comprehensive regional uh, university in Angelo State with a $130 million endowment. That, What's uh, a border medical school? Well, the border medical school is in uh, El Paso, Texas. Oh, actually on the so, border is yeah, what you mean. Oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. Literally, you can, <laughs> if you, if you were, you could probably hit a, a good drive and hit the real uh, Right, the, and the we're the only Grand. ones that have one on the border. Right, now the Rio Grande Valley school we in the UT system, in, in, yes, it, 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 to, uh, Texas is UT is going to have a, a campus down in the Rio Grande Valley now, but mm-hmm. right now we're our, we're the only one, and we were the first, and uh, really doing a good, great job out there. It's a uh, great uh, Paul Foster School of Medicine. We've had a lot of philanthropy out of that community that has supported that medical school. It's a beautiful campus with a great opportunity to do some good research and train some really high quality uh, health related uh, uh, professionals. Yeah, a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of big things going on at the university. <clears throat> Aside from the fact that you guys are trying to steal our police chief. <laughs> yeah, right. What's up with that? <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, Texas Tech's a great place to work. I'll yeah. promise you it's it's a great uh, opportunity for anybody. We're, we're proud of uh, what we have to offer to our employees and to our students and faculty. Yeah. Do you anyway, know how many people have interviewed for that job? I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly how many. Uh, I haven't been directly involved in that yeah. process. Hey, um, all right. This is something that we've been talking about over, over the past couple of days, you know, no, you know, arranging this interview, and we appreciate you coming in here. <clears throat> and off mic, <clears throat> we were kind of uh, throwing some things out there. You know, with, <clears throat> excuse me, with the social dynamic <clears throat> that we have today. And, you know, a lot of strained relations, you know, socially. And then, you know, just ramping up for this interview today, we had a lot of calls about, you know, racism and things like that. Had some people um, concerned about open carry, well, concealed carry, and what's now going to be open carry in Texas, and in campus carry. Uh, (laughs) Had visited with some university teachers and some teachers in other schools, and they're just like, wow, they are terrified of this. Now, you know, I'm just going to let you speak on the on the topic because I mean it's it it's multifaceted. There are pros and cons to everything. But um what do you say about all this? Well, I, I always start off saying that guns up now has a different meaning. Yeah, it does <laughs> but, indeed. Um, I think that um first of all let's talk about what the law is yes. today before the legislature passed the so-called campus carry legislation. In Texas, you can carry if you have a concealed handgun license, you can carry a concealed handgun on a college campus. You just cannot take it into the buildings or you cannot go into an NCAA athletic event. So to the extent that you that that the law allows it, it already allows it on campuses today. The difference in this bill is that it allows it to go into uh, the buildings. The advocates for the bill took the position, and I was familiar with this when I was serving in the legislature because this came before the committee that I chaired. And the advocates say, look, it's it's a meaningless uh, uh, provision that allows us to carry on campus if we can't carry it into a building because we have no place to put the gun so if you're at night, you're at the library, or you're working in a lab, or you're working 
in a take a night class and you're walking back to the parking lot you can't carry your gun because you have no place to put it and so you have to leave it in your car and so that's the self-defense aspect of the proponents of the legislation and so the legislature i think being as you know uh, fairly conservative uh, and uh, i think very uh, most of the republican legislators certainly are committed to second amendment rights and protections of those rights uh, this legislation came through now in the past higher ed has generally been um, against this and and so and i voted against this uh, at one time in the legislature my concern was is you really can't have guns in dorms and and uh, once we reached some agreement on that i was able to support it as chancellor as we started looking into it you can see there's a lot of issues out there that have to be dealt with and uh, our position at least you had ut taking a position this session absolutely opposed to it you had a and m kind of open the gate uh, when Chancellor Sharp wrote a letter saying, we don't care, basically. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a number of us in the higher ed community, uh, me being one of them, uh, we said, well, look, we're not going to take a, we're going to take a neutral position because the legislature is going to do what it wants to do. Right. Let's make sure that if we do this, that it, we do it right. In other words, there needs to be flexibility on these campuses as to where you can and cannot have handgun. Uh, we were concerned about the ability to negotiate with the federal government for federal research. If we couldn't provide security, a gun-free environment for a certain type of lab, whether it's a defense research or nuclear research or right. or uh, disease, in you know, uh, uh, like hantavirus or what other. And so we worked on that issue and encouraged flexibility. And at the end of the day, the legislature, I think, if you're going to have campus carry, and you can debate this one all day long, I think it's probably not as all it's not as as neat as the gun advocates think it is, and it's not as bad as the opponents say it is. But you have to have flexibility to deal with the unique issues each campus presents. Right. We're gonna we're gonna ask you to hang with us just for a minute before uh, before we go to the break. I just want to, if I can, uh, engage you in. A man on the street Q and A. We were talking about where guns are and are not going to be in the campus carry. Will they be allowed? Okay, and this happens August sixteen. August two thousand sixteen. Yeah, August two thousand sixteen. September first yeah, or right. September one. Okay, so um, when school convenes next year, will handguns be allowed in classrooms? I think, you know, it depends, and I think the, the legislation gives the presidents of each institution the opportunity to establish rules and regulations where firearms would be prohibited. And, you know, I think it, what we're going to do in our system is sit down and study the law and come up with standards and guidelines and allow the presidents to implement rules that uh, would be consistent with those guidelines. So Commons. each president will have the ability to come up with their own rules about how this will be carried out on campus? Th they will. Then those will go through, in our system, they go through the chancellor's office, mm -hmm. and then they go to the board. The, uh, the legislation allows the board to amend or reject by two-thirds majority uh, what the presidents do on their campus. Mm -hmm. In uh, conversation, Chancellor uh, Robert Duncan, Texas Tech University, in the middle of a Q&A. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thanks for being with us. This is Lubbock's First News. Good morning. It's 823 in conversation with Chancellor Robert Duncan, Texas Tech University System. Uh, thanks again for being on the program mm -hmm. with us. And if you have a call, a uh, question or comment and would like to call, 770-5790 is the number. I have a question about the whole perception of Texas universities with people around the nation, because we like to attract uh, students from all over the nation here and professors from all over the nation. Now that we are going to be a, a concealed carry state on college campuses, are you afraid that's going to mess with our perception or the perception of Texas Tech's safety with other people? You know what, that's We'll just have to see. I, I think that that is a concern that higher ed has generally raised is that – and then you also you have the private universities like Baylor and Rice. They can completely opt out. And so I think there's some – you know, I, I think there's a little bit of – that's a problem in my view is that you have some universities that can opt out, the privates. 
whereas the others, uh, you know, are, are, are mandated to do this. But, I, you know, we'll see. I think that this, again, as I said earlier, I don't think this is going to be as bad as a lot of people think it is. Again, concealed handgun licensees have been, you know, have a good record. Uh, the people that you worry about are the people that aren't the licensed people who, you know, have issues. And that this law does nothing to open that floodgate at all. I think it's important, though, that when we do our rules, that we, we're careful to do those in the appropriate locations, and that also we provide opportunities for training, not just for our law enforcement or faculty, but for anybody that wants to, to exercise their right under a CHL to carry on campus to understand what the rules of engagement are. In other words, how should you – what is this gun for? It's for self-defense. You are not a cop, and you are not to be, uh, you know, taking the law into your own hands. Uh, let the law enforcement do that. For example, if you have an active shooter in a classroom, when when the police come in, they're trained to take out the guns, and they don't have the ability to say you're a good gun and you're a bad gun. So right. everybody needs to understand – what the rules of engagement are in those kind of situations. So I had active shooter training, and the officer told us, don't even have a cell phone in your hand in that situation right. because an officer might perceive that to be a gun and take you out. So I, I, that's not mandated in the legislation, uh, but I do think that you know we're going to de- hopefully develop something that uh, will offer uh, the opportunity for everyone involved to, to understand the rules of, the, uh, of what's going on here. Um, and hopefully uh, this will pass and be, you know, a benign sort of a law at the end of the day. I would think maybe the biggest threat with this might be accidental shootings or self-inflicted shootings. Well, that, that can occur today. I mean, right. you have you – know, we have guns when you're on dealing with a today. high-stress situation, like right. on many college campuses. Kids are under a lot of stress sometimes. Right. I don't know, though, that that's necessarily limited to the CHL. In fact, that population is probably not the at-risk population with regard to guns. It's the other population that is, is not taking the time to go through the background check, go through uh, the training and things like that. So I worry more about those those that population than I do about the CHL population. And, of course, I think on everybody's minds, sporting events – sometimes highly volatile, highly emotional times, Right? would guns be allowed into sporting events no. on college campuses? No, I think that would be an inappropriate location. I think the legislature's always recognized that even in the early Well, you know, I have this vision of Tony Baroni. Yes. You know, walking through. <laughs> hey, I was at that game. <laughs> Me too. I was very close to where that wow. happened. Wow. I'm not you know, sure who I was for. You but, know, or, uh, or, you know, somebody tipping, you know, uh, sipping a flask at, you know, in yeah. Jones Stadium, we get a 45-yard yeah. bomb. They decide to yeah. pull out the 45 and salute yeah. with Raider Red. Yeah. Well, let, it, let, it, let, me, let me be clear on this. I, I think higher ed generally and, and in particular, you know, I'd prefer that we not have this. But we do have it. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank our, our West Texas delegation, Senator Perry and Representative Frulo and Burroughs, who worked with us and helped us to get this flexibility that we needed, I think, our delegation really did us a nice job with uh, helping us to be able to make this w- to where if we have the flexibility, uh, that that gives us the opportunity, I think, to allay some of the the, the fears that people Concerns. have. But you're never you going to get rid of all year. that perception. You guys right. have a year to come up with your plans per campus. Right. And uh, will you come back on and talk to us when you have sure. the plans ready to go? We'll do that. The system will come up. When our, our plan is to come up with standards, and then the presidents can – can do rules in there. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Just want to dispel the uh, dispel the notion. You know, everybody thinks that uh, the chancellor's job is cush. Okay, but he walks in here with basically a, a bodyguard and an inch and a half thick binder <laughs> that says Texas Tech Office of the <laughs> Chancellor Daily Schedule, and it's in a binder by itself, an inch oh, and a half thick <laughs> that says Thursday, June 11 on it. So good luck to you, man. <laughs> Thank you. It'll be a good day. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Enjoy Appreciate it. that.